So I've just completed the rebuild of this M85 LSD uh, 3.7 to 1 gear ratio differential from an IS300. And um, what had happened to it was that uh, it had probably, I'm guessing, when these were changed, um, the person probably followed a video guide where there was a hammer involved. And this was probably sitting on the ground. So you do not want to be exposing this part to any type of mechanical stress laterally. It is meant to rotate and only rotate. It is not a support in any which way. And so um, it didn't take long for one dent to become this mess, which uh, eventually created so much metal shavings that um, the seal, which I actually chopped up, um, was leaking. This is the side one. Um, the side ones had some damage as well, but uh, like all those metal shavings in there, I I've never seen anything like it. There was so much metal coming out of this thing. Um, I was worried everything would be completely toast. So, <clears throat> uh, in my case, um, there's a bearing here that was done. This one I replaced for precaution, and these two as well. Uh, they're not cheap, neither are the seals, but these entire units uh, are over a thousand or two in unknown condition. Well, over a thousand in unknown condition off of eBay, and over two thousand if you can get them from a dealer, which you probably can't. Um, I'm also not very crazy about this. This brand is Strong Flex, so they have a lifetime warranty. Uh, I have no idea if they would honor that in my case, uh, but this. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, it's not rad. So these are actually hard to come by otherwise, so glad somebody's making them. Um, when you are doing a differential rebuild, backlash is super critical. So absolutely plan to buy a small tube of this material. It's a gear marking compound and get a brush. And when you have everything back together, uh, you want to put this thing into a drive mode with some teeth marked and then also put it into reverse to get your coast and your or your driving your coast sides um, when you do your margining your goal is to have an equal amount of marking on both sides uh, as well as equally spaced and not too high too low or curved um, there are a lot of charts as to how to read that online some of them have slightly different tolerances. I mean, I've seen some that caught a lot of stuff because the others did not. But in my case here, um, I'm pretty much centered and that's on both sides. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm still new to this, so I'm not like the Bible of it. But what I can tell you is Toyota has like 20 different part numbers or like 50 different part numbers for the shims that go on the sides here. They look like they came off the Death Star. So when you're taking this thing apart, uh, if you're just doing some type of internal cleanup or mod, um, absolutely mark the race that came off as to whether it was the left side or the right uh, and the washer as well. I even marked the washer as outside so I put LO and RO on mine. Now bear in mind that those are just a small part of how you manage your um, backlash. So a more critical component is this guy here. This thing um, it's a crush sleeve and it sits after the pinion gears bearing inside the housing on this side and then as you'll see in the diagram uh, well, over here. so you've got your case right there's your gear and your bearing there is a part here that in my case was still in the case um, because the race was there and so was that component um, That is your bearing, that is your oil flinger, that is your seal, that is a metal dust cover, and this is slightly different to draw, this guy here, your input flange. Now this input flange um, had some wear and tear on it, so the next thing I'm going to do when I'm done, I'm going to stand it up on its end, put some ATF in it to about here, and see if it leaks at all. I might even turn it a bit, because these are not cheap and it has a pretty heavy gouge. So um, hopefully that gouge is accommodated for by the spring and the seal. And I mean, hopefully it accommodates it for more than a few 10,000 miles. Hopefully it'll get by for a hundred or two. 
But this spring, um, which I took out of one of these, is inside here, holds the little lip in. So when you're doing a tear down, <clears throat> you'll wanna uh, inspect the inside of that lip kind of gently, just very gently push it towards you and look at it. You'll see a couple of lines every so, so many segments and they should look very uniform. If there's any type of scratching on there, just get a new seal. Um, so this is an LSD. So when you grab this thing and spin it, uh, it can break free of the input in terms of friction and coast. And if I tap this other one in here, this is just a closet hanger. If I were to hold that side and this one and twist it, they would fight, but I have the one in my hand. So um, they will spin freely without the input flange on this and the opens. Um, but once they get a little bit of friction, they act as one piece. It's torsion, so there's a bit of trickery in there. These are actually not fantastic for racing. Um, torsion isn't isn't really meant for uh, high horsepower, higher view situations. As far as I can tell, there's better choices like uh, clutch types and things. And those, of course, go in with a weld if you're not too worried about tire wear on a daily. But um, yeah, when you're doing your margining, uh, that crush sleeve, it's a one-time use thing. So you have to buy another one. And what you want to do is just get it to where this has no play in or out. It, it needs to be close to make a full contact here. Um, <clears throat> and check multiple times, check this as you go. What I like to do is just mark a couple insides and outsides of one spot. And then when you're ready to check again, you just start wiping this way all the way around. And once you get all the way around, you've wiped it all the way to there. Every new marking is new after that heavy spot right there. So <clears throat> you'll be able to do it a couple of times. One tube was enough for a guy who's fairly new with this to get by. Uh, I tried Desitin as a uh, <laughs> absolutely desperate measure on my last go on this other one over here. And um, it's a pumpkin, see? Uh, it, you know, honestly, there's some good and some bad about it. I get much more clear idea of like void space with the Desitin, but this yellow stuff is super sticky and certainly doesn't smell as bad as cod liver oil. <coughs> so I would say like, um, Desitin might show some things that this won't, but the right thing is the right thing. And if you're learning, just spend a couple of bucks on the right thing. Um, so once you've got it close, uh, you want to hold this in place and then turn this. Now, uh, bear in mind, if you're reusing your pinion gear, um, the teeth that this thing get detented down to, those guys, um, they might get damaged. And so this can be pretty hard to turn. In a brand new scenario, you would actually go by torque input here to determine how much more crushing you want to get done. Uh, in my case, I can't do that because there's too much friction here. So I just held this in place, kept this thing where I wanted it, visually like kind of 12 o'clock on this and that hole there, right? <clears throat> and then I turned it a couple of turns on impact mode uh, until it got about um, a little less than an eighth. So you've got like, this would be a quarter, this would be an eighth, so I was doing a little, little less than an eighth of a turn at a time. Um, tell this thing dialed from um, definitely too far out this way to I think as margin as I'm gonna get. And if I kept turning, I would be overshot and then that would cause gear wear and other really undesirable things like coasting and such. So um, only other thing that I'm kind of curious about right now I'm gonna waste some of this. I'm kind of curious about these markings on the case here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smooch this on here. I'm assuming that that happened when things were sloppy and that it won't be rubbing anymore. And yeah, I don't see a whole lot of action there on the way. <coughs> but this thing was a metal milkshake inside. Uh, the other thing you can do is I can actually run this really gently, uh, not for too long, so you don't have a lot of lubricant in there both ways. And I was doing that to get my markings as well. So this is driving forward here. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, it's kind of a fun project, so I've got a couple of things going on here. I always wanted to get into these kind of things, and uh, winter was a good time to, to fart around. So. 
hopefully some of this information is helpful to you. Uh, one other last bit of advice is um, <clears throat> if I do post the other video where I was kind of experimenting on that guy's build, um, these washers that are shims um, on the outside, uh, I would suggest you buy one like significantly larger than you think you could possibly need and then just sand the thing down on a very flat surface with, uh, I think I used about a hundred or so uh, grit sandpaper. Um, <clears throat> it takes a while and you have to have a steady hand, but um, I was able to make a uniform reduction on that one when I replaced the bearings. On this guy, um, I actually had a couple of steps that just happened to match. Um, but <clears throat> there's some left to right behavior that happens here that's important to the alignment. And in the charts, it'll clearly tell you whether you need to go this way or the other on things. Um, the other thing is that um, when you're tightening these, uh, you want to max out the torque before you do any of this or come really close. So um, <coughs> usually I do it in a uh, you know two at a time kind of thing. Um, <coughs> then you want to tighten. Sorry, you want to tighten this side. <coughs> Pardon, gosh, dang, before this side. Uh, boy, transmission fluids make my throat itch. Um, <coughs> so, uh, hence the open air out here, but, uh, if you were to tighten them in a slightly different order, apparently for some forms, that could affect, um, how things land a little tiny bit. Um, I kind of have my doubts, but it makes sense because there's like this kind of hinge action here that is sort of the whole mechanism behind this alignment. So may as well follow best practice because it might matter on some build, if not this one. Um, Always get new crush washers on your things. And then, um, yeah, if you're doing sizing, you could definitely go with something several steps larger and size it down. Um, I'm imagining, you know, guys do this all day, probably have a machine to quickly size down something because nobody wants to have 30 or 50 part numbers on hand when they're even a couple bucks a piece that adds up. So, yeah, all right, I'm gonna get a glass of water. Y'all have a good day.